We are back with Hoop Who Media Top 100 Countdown, and number 78 in the country, we have the Loyola Marymount Lions. What's up, college basketball fans? I'm Hoop Who Media co-founder Austin Getchy, and welcome to the Hoop Who Media Top 100 College Basketball Teams Countdown. In this series, we'll be counting down our top 100 teams for next season and releasing a video every day until the college basketball season begins. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and give our social medias a follow. Simple things like that help more college basketball fans like you enjoy our content. With that being said, enjoy the rest of the video and 99 other videos in this series. Following an incredibly disappointing 2021-22 season, Loyola Marymount bounced back and was good last year, getting wins at Gonzaga and at home versus St. Mary's in conference play, in addition to non-conference wins over Wake Forest and Nevada. However, if Stan Johnson and company will continue their success, they'll have to do so without star guard Cam Shelton, who exhausted his eligibility. Shelton led the WCC in points with 21.4 per game on efficient scoring while being second in the conference in assists as well. They'll also be without guard Jalen Anderson, who transferred to Ball State, Chan Stevens, who transferred to Maryland, and Justin Orange, who exhausted his eligibility. The Lions got a lot of significant help from the portal this offseason, but more importantly get power forward Kaylee Lupepe, who has some of the best hair in college basketball, back for year five. Lupepe is a skilled forward, being a solid rebounder, and also expanding his range by shooting over 42% from three-point range last season. With a significant amount of roster turnover, he's a good piece to have stick around. Johnson got a solid point guard addition in LSU transfer Justice Hill. Hill really struggled this past season at LSU, but the year before was a high-level point guard at Murray State, a top 25 team. He's a very good passer and should be able to go back to his Murray State level in the WCC, a less physical league than the SEC. Next to Hill in the backcourt, the Lions added NC Central transfer Justin Wright, who excels scoring the ball. He's a solid three-level scorer who did so at high efficiency. In the few games he played last year versus high-level competition, he shot the ball very well, and although it's a small sample size, it is encouraging as he will be making a big step up this year. Another transfer that could start for Loyola Marymount is in-conference guard Dominic Harris from Gonzaga. Harris didn't see much time with Gonzaga, largely due to injuries. However, he was a top 100 recruit and did show flashes at times. He should benefit a ton by getting more playing time. Loyola Marymount also had Cal big man Lars Tiemann. Tiemann played in a bad Cal team, but his size of seven feet is intriguing. He's a decent rebounder and rim protector, and should become a more efficient player overall, being in a better system. The other guard Johnson added was UTRGV transfer Will Johnston. Johnston shot the ball well from three-point range, connecting on nearly 42% of his shots over the season. He's also a solid passer, with a 21.4% assist rate. Johnston is someone that really helps the depth of the guard position for the team. Loyola Marymount returns forward Alex Merkvilladze. He's a solid rebounder and in conference play last year was an efficient scorer. He's a player who doesn't do anything crazy, but you can get some solid production out of him every game. The Lions also return a pair of centers in Michael Graham and Rick Asanza. Graham shot over 70% from the field and was a high level rebounder and shot blocker. Asanza is a similar player, leading the team in blocks and is a former Oklahoma transfer. Loyola Marymount also has wings Noah Tates and Lamaz Lewis returning. Tate set out last year due to injury, but before that shot the ball well from three-point range at Stanford. Lewis was a solid bench base last year and could play some serviceable minutes at times. Johnson also had two freshmen in the team. Aaron McBride was a big pickup, ranked as a borderline top 150 recruit. He could see some immediate playing time and will be an impactful player as long as he stays at LMU. Serbian guard Jovan Ristic was also added to the team. He recently played the U19 FIBA World Cup. Overall, I am liking this Loyola Marymount team. Although replacing Shelton won't be easy, I do think they added enough places to cumulatively replace him and be better than last year, even though there's no one on his team that can replace the production one for one. One thing this team has is depth, most players in the roster being able to make significant contributions. Johnson is going into his fourth year as head coach of the team and is looking to prove that 2022 down year was a fluke and he is one of the better coaches in the conference. Because of all these factors, I have the Lions sitting at third in the WCC and should be competitive nationally. Loyola Marymount fans, let me know your thoughts in the comments and where you'd personally have them ranked. 
We will be back tomorrow for the number 77 team in the country. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it.